Hello makers and welcome back to another vlog. If you are new here, a special welcome to you. I'm Joanna and this is Stitching the High Notes where each week I share what I am currently making, whether it be knitting, sewing, crochet, cooking, cross stitch, whatever my creative focus is that week. My hope every vlog is to encourage and inspire you to nourish your own creativity and to stitch joy or the high notes into your everyday life. How are you? I hope that you are doing well, that you've had a wonderful week. I am doing well. I did have a wonderful week, but let me tell you, it was it, this happens every year with the start of February. Things gear shift right back into full throttle momentum and pace. And that's how it was for me this week in a wonderful way. But I did get some making done in between and some uh, things that I haven't worked on in a while that I'm going to share with you here in a little bit. My granny stripe blanket. Um, which is some crochet and an update on my falling in love cowl because I, I'm glad I let it rest a little bit because I got a good idea that I'm going to take somebody up on and I'll give you some more details here in a minute. And I also cooked a little bit. I've been cooking up a storm, which also tends to happen around this time of year and I want to keep it going this year, but I made a new scone recipe that I want to share with you all. It's one that, new to me um, that was really, really good. A keeper for sure. So without further ado, if you haven't already, grab your knitting or stitching a lovely beverage. I have a lovely cup of tea and let's catch up. It is Sunday morning again. This has become my new sit down and chat with you all time every week. It just is works out better in the schedule and it's really lovely. It's been raining off and on the last like day or so. Um, but it's sunny right now, the clouds are parting, and I've already had my coffee for the day, so I'm onto some black tea. Today I'm having some uh, Leo tea. It's based on the uh, astrological series uh, from Magic Hour Tea, my kind of go-to tea brand right now. Not sponsored, but I love them. And it has um, black tea pearls, which are really cool to see them unfurl. Um, as it's brewing and then orange peel and all kinds of good stuff. This is actually the last brew Because it's one of my favorite that I've gotten from magic hour. So I have to order some more pretty soon here Because <laughs> I want it in stock all the time. So it's pretty good. I'm gonna grab another sip here mm -mm. And let's get into it. So where to start? So I think I'll start with my granny stripe blanket, which I have housed in one of my sweater bags that I kept for myself from a collection a while ago. So it's grown a little bit. I picked this up, I wanna say last week, I might've mentioned it. I was kind of starting to gravitate towards it because the pace of life has picked up again. This happens with the nature of uh, the pace of my job that my main job that I have um, after like the last week of January things really kind of kick off again and in terms of like momentum and planning for seasons ahead and everything I work at the opera by the way <clears throat> so season as in terms of performance season uh, and as such I was really wanting something that was easy peasy and you know just um, but you know, gives you kind of some uh, inspiration off and on, kind of like self-striping socks kind of thing where you get the changing of colors and also kind of just reigniting like different, like crocheting. I haven't crocheted in a while. So without further ado, here is my project as it is now. Uh, it's not too large. I started this a while ago and then favored other projects for a while. I'm making it quite long, <laughs> as you can see. My hope is to, um, I've, I can't remember how many, um, I have to get all the terminology back here with crochet. I can't remember what I chained up for the initial count, but it's long, big enough to be a topper, maybe a little bit over the edge for a queen size bed. That was my hope. Is something that I can put on top of my bed or someday if I have a guest bed to put it on top of there and color wise I'm just grabbing from my stash 
and kind of doing a pastel, brighter kind of color situation using scrap yarn from different projects that I've done over time or like this series right here was a, um, a bag of mini skeins like a collection that I had gotten and then now I'm back to kind of just grabbing random mini skeins that I had already had in my project bag that I uh, discovered when I did my whip parade a couple of weeks ago and as such it was in a smaller bag and I was like I gotta get into a bigger bag so I grabbed this guy I'm using a size D hook if you can see that three point should have brought my glasses 3.25 millimeter and these are clover it's a clover set that I got I think on Amazon you can get them I think at Joann's or Mark you know Michaels or some kind of big box store as well um, and I really like the cushioned grip right here so yeah and I decided on the hook size based on some other projects that I'd seen on Ravelry where I really liked the fabric that was created using this size hook and in terms of a pattern I'm not using a pattern per se not like a paid for or something written down I'm using a YouTube tutorial which I'll link down below in the show notes um, and it is I, I have it I think I know it well enough now that I haven't looked at it in a while but if need be if I put this down for some reason and need to refresh hopefully it'll be there forever but granny stray blanket is kind of you know there are many, many different tutorials out there. If you have a favorite tutorial for a granny stripe blanket, please let us know down in the comments below. I'm always game for, you know, hearing a same pattern from a different perspective or, um, you know, talked about in a different way, uh, detailed in a different way, described in a different way. There, oh, let's do this. we got there together. <laughs> Let me take another sip. <laughs> so, um, yes. And in terms of how I am joining my yarn, I have decided to do magic knot ball method, which I also am using a link that I referred to yesterday, actually, down, and I'll leave that link down below too. And that's just because I feel comfortable using that method for something like this. I'm not needing it to be super stripey wipey <laughs> where you have clear differences in colors um i think where i joined the color that i'm on now oh it was like right here so you can kind of see how it blends together and it just makes it easy and then i can you know if i feel moved to do so i can kind of get four or five different mini skeins or more and magic not ball them all together so i have like an ongoing giant skein and i can just crochet like the wind it's great a lot of people do this for like cozy um knitter blankets or not cozy knitter that's a beloved dyer uh cozy memories blankets and um yeah it's a great technique but some people are like uh, it's a knot it can be a little like wary so you can also think of the tutorial if i remember correctly for the granny stripe blanket it shows you how to join a um a skate a new skein of yarn kind of in the traditional way on the edge so it's great what else to say so i started working on this uh throughout this past week uh while i was on a stitch and chat zoom chat uh, with my patreon supporters and then also last night we had the very first family movie night that we're establishing with my nephew um, on some Saturdays so he can start seeing like traditional favorite movies because he's old enough now so last night we watched Indiana Jones and the Holy Grail or the Last Crusade rather uh, and it was so much fun we had to hide his eyes during some particularly scary parts I completely forgot about all of the rats in that movie and how that stemmed into my disdain for rats. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun and it was fun to work on this during that. I wound up this uh, skein of yarn, which I'm going to have to do the next one here. This is a, I think I have a label. I don't always know what 
these are, but this is a Fawn and Fox, I think was the name of the dyer, the Fawn and the Fox. Um, and this was a, I don't know how to even pronounce that, but here is what the colorway and the base I think may have been Raven. I mean, it's super old. I think this is maybe six or seven years old. So really fun. And then this is, Lord knows what this is. I think this might've been from that set that I had done before, but I was kind of breaking it up. And I might do a different one just cause I don't think this pairs. I just kind of eyeball it and see if I like how the colors pair together. I don't know, I might just go for it. So yeah, so my voice got so excited it squeaked. So that is kind of my main focus as of right now today maybe continuing on this week. Um, I do have an itch to cast something new on very soon, something smaller. Um, I do definitely want to cast on some of my sweaters, but I'm just not quite there yet in terms of feeling uh, like I can really focus and be present, which is my intention this year, but I'll get there. Um, so yeah, so there's that. And then the next thing that I worked on in my brain <laughs> well i started to work on is my falling in love cowl which i shared uh last week that i'm at the point where i'm ready to do a three needle decrease and do a couple of rows of knitting and then join in the round and then block but as i was sharing it last week i or even before just as i was preparing as you can see, it's gonna be so snug. It'll probably have like another inch, maybe two inches of fabric the way that I was was gonna do it. Um, and then I was thinking about it, the yarn's not really gonna grow that much in length because of the nylon in it. And I also have a very large head and I just thought it's gonna be a bear to get over my head. And then Nancy, I see you. <laughs> Nancy wrote in the comments for the vlog with the brilliant idea that I completely forgot I had of what about extending the length with the mini skein that came with this skein of yarn, which I'll describe here in a minute. Genius. Genius. So I thought about this actually over this weekend and have decided to do just that. So I'm gonna wind this up this week and um, carry on and I think maybe just go ahead and plop the whole beautiful color and skein in here and extend the length. So it won't be super snug, um, but I think it'll be a really good length so it'll just kind of be a traditional like infinity cowl, if you will. Um, so thank you, Nancy, I'm so happy. So. That is the status of this. A little bit about the yarn very quickly. I feel like I talk about this every episode, but if you are new, this is a skein of yarn by Woolens and Nosh. The colorway is called Falling in Love. So I've just been calling this project Falling in Love Cowl. It's based on colorways that you see in the trees during the autumn or the fall. It's in collaboration with a YouTuber and teacher and also my BFF, Denise, who is known as Earth Tones Girl. And oh, it's just absolutely stunning. And I cast this on during the fall when I needed just a very simple in the round stockinette project. I didn't really feel called to make another pair of socks, but I remembered this pattern, which is actually called Tail as Old as Time that I've made previously. And links to everything and the yarn and all of that jazz is down below in the description box. So that is my knitting, now on to a little bit of cooking. Mm -mm -mm. I just do a little dance every time I take a sip of tea. <laughs> so yesterday I decided, and I had wanted to do this throughout this week, but yesterday I finally got the chance to uh, make a new to me scone recipe. I have been on a scone making kick as of late because they're wonderful to bring with me on my commute uh, down to the city, down to San Francisco a couple of days a week. 
um, and they're just lovely to have in the fridge and or out on the counter they can keep for a couple of days on the counter or in the fridge the particular recipe that I make or the base of the recipe I've been using my one of my favorite uh, recipe sites paleo running mama uh, because I eat grain free and kind of paleo-esque kind of hodgepodge for my uh, diet and allergy kind of friendly stuff that I need and it's just oh it is such a great recipe I actually use butter in it instead of ghee or shortening I just think it makes it that much better <laughs> if you can tolerate butter why not to have butter in there and this time I made a raspberry lemon scone with some icing on top as well. Link to the recipe is down below. It was fluffy and buttery, but not overly buttery, you know, and it was just really great to have like the fresh tart raspberries in there, a little promise of spring to come a little bit. Um, yeah, it was just really, really good and it just felt really good to um, make with my hands in a different way. I've been cooking quite a bit as of late uh, using a new kind of food service. Um, that I've been trying out called Hungry Root. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about it. I'm kind of going back and forth, but so far it's been pretty good because you can get groceries with it as well. I'll have a link down to it below again, not sponsored, but I always, I ha by the way, if you hear a YouTuber say that, we have to kind of state that, otherwise YouTube will like police ya. <laughs> so I'm not being uh, pretentious or anything, but anyway, a little side note there because I kind of was like, why do YouTubers say that all the time? And I did a little bit of research and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Anyway, so the raspberry lemon scone is a keeper. I highly, highly recommend it. Before I end today's chat, I did want to say a huge thank you to everyone who showed up for the most recent shop update, which was last week. I'm so glad that you loved the new bag collections. They are pretty much sold out except for maybe a couple of Notions bags, so thank you, thank you. I will be doing a limited small amount of restock with the next shop update, which will be either at the end of February or the beginning of March. I'll let y'all know soon via newsletter and on Instagram and I will have a full preview of the bags um, just before the update so do make sure to uh, join the newsletter and follow me over on Instagram if you want a further ahead heads up on those bags um, I've got the fabric on the way and it's gonna be so much fun it's it's great it's super exciting um, as always I mean if it wasn't exciting then I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> Let's be real. But anyway, thank you. Thank you. On that awkward, still waking up note, I'm going to end this week's chat here. I hope that you have a great week ahead. Uh, please let us know what you were making down below. I do read it every week. I love seeing it and getting creative inspiration from you all. And I hope you all are reading the comments down below as well and getting inspiration too. It's so much fun. So... I will see you all again very soon next Sunday.